as a kid, I was always interested in pulling things apart, and pushing things together, and farming gave me the opportunity to tinker. As a farmer, uh, I like to say you're a MacGyver. And so you have to be able to, to have every trade under your belt and have some, some knowledge about everything. And so from a young age, uh, I felt like farming gave me the opportunity to expand my horizons in my mind. Angela Tenbrook is a fourth generation farmer. On her farm, Worldwide Aquaponics in East Palatka, Florida, she carries on the family tradition of hydroponic and aquaponic farming. I say four generations because starting with my great grandfather, we began working inside of greenhouses. So for four generations, we've been working and farming differently. Aquaponic farming takes advantage of the symbiotic relationship between fish and plants. The fish waste provides nutrients to the plants, and the plants filter and clean the water, which is then returned to the fish tanks. We refer to our water inside of our greenhouses as soil water, because we have all the components that is needed for plants to grow in a very hospitable, beautiful environment all the time. Utilizing controlled environments, aquaponics allows for crops of the highest quality to be grown from seed to harvest in as little as 30 days, with a fraction of the land and water needed for traditional farming. And being a closed loop system means no effluent, fertilizers, or pesticides ever leaves the farm. This is very important to Angela because worldwide aquaponics is only a short walk away from the St. Johns River. Phosphorus has the potential to harm this river. The way Angela is doing things, she doesn't have to pick a rate. She doesn't have to say, I want to apply 100 pounds of phosphorus per acre in order to make my potatoes productive. She gets to say, I'm going to produce phosphorus naturally through my fish waste, and I'm going to give my plants the opportunity to take up as much phosphorus as they want. And what they don't want to use will just get recycled back into the waste stream. And that is a beautiful model for our future. She was able to shut down almost, you know, three and a half million gallons of water a day of discharge into this estuary. And that is hugely powerful. That, that affects us, um, everybody from right up through Hastings all the way up into Jacksonville and, and the estuaries all the way around Jacksonville and the St. John's River. Angela's aquaponics is groundbreaking in, in all senses of, of how she goes about it, from the way she staffs it to the way she cultivates the plants. She's basically restructuring the way uh, you can utilize a property like this or a farm. While farming has been a part of her family tradition, Angela started her professional career as an educator, spending 15 years in Duval County Public Schools teaching science and health through agriculture. Drawing upon her farming background, she introduced students to hydroponics. Uh, I came in as a science teacher, uh, then moved into administration, and then from administration went back to teaching. Um, and so I, uh, I spent a career, uh, 15 uh, school years, uh, in education. In 2013, Angela began work on a new project, Traders Hill Farm which would utilize an abandoned chicken barn and repurpose it into a fully-fledged aquaponics farm. Once described as a science fair project, Traders Hill Farm proved to be an unmitigated success, growing from a 5,000 unit production to 155,000 when she sold the business in 2017. Well, I'm super proud of what Traders Hill Farm is today and what we accomplished there. Uh, we were the first group in the world to do SQF certification, which put commercial aquaponics on the, on the books. So we were the first commercial aquaponics facility to get food safety certification. Every large aquaponics facility has followed suit since. Um, I'm proud to say that that was us. Combining her skills as a farmer and educator, in 2015, Angela founded the leading edge consultation company, Aqua Hortis working with people worldwide to build or repurpose facilities and operate similar aquaponic systems. 
one of the mottos that she's talking about all the time is feed the world. And this is exactly what she is doing. When she sees that some people are uh, short of uh, resources, she thinks about how to get it to them, but not how to give them the supplies, but how to help them to create the supplies for themselves. You know, when we're able to teach people how to do things, it helps them to go on and teach another. This is a woman who has touched multiple countries across the world, right? She's got over 200 aquaponics initiatives that she's been involved with everywhere from here in Florida to Prague to the British uh, Virgin Islands. Angela's passion for sustainability and community outreach cannot be overstated. In 2013, she launched the Center for Sustainable Agricultural Excellence and Conservation, or CSAEC, a nonprofit network of farmers working to develop and share best practices for more sustainable agriculture and increased access to fresh produce in underserved communities. She's somebody who, when she sees a challenge, she's all ready to jump in and try to solve it, right? And so food insecurity in Northeast Florida, as it is throughout our country, is a significant issue. And so it makes sense to me that that would be a strong focus for Angela. In 2018, Angela's passion to defeat food insecurity inspired her to build an urban farm in Jacksonville's White House community. Foodery Farms was a prototype educational piece to be able to put into Jacksonville's Northwest Jacksonville um, to see what would happen if we put a farm prototype in a community that needed food. And um, through that work, we got involved with Feeding Northeast Florida and a variety of food and security advocates. Taking the idea one step further, Angela conceived of a way to make fresh produce available to underserved communities any time of day. Fresh produce vending machines. Why can't we put produce vending machines in? So hell, I went and pitched it. I went and pitched it, won the local competition. I went and pitched it, won the state. I won the Guidewell Block by Block Challenge for food insecurity. They gave me $20,000. I built the thing. Throughout the pandemic, Angela and her volunteers with CSAEC and We Care Jax have packed and distributed thousands of boxes and bags of fresh produce to seniors and families in need, as well as healthcare patients suffering from cancer and other chronic disease. Those most vulnerable people who cannot risk venturing into public to simply get food. Right at the time that the world shut down because of the pandemic, uh, typical of Angela, uh, she decided that there was more that needed to be done in helping um, families and elders and young people who all of a sudden found themselves um, struggling to find access to food, especially fresh food. So she reached out to her network of folks and said, if I pull this together, will you be a part of it? Will you be a part of helping to make sure this gets in the right hands, in the right bellies? I got a call from her and she told me, hey, uh, I'm about to start this farm to door project and I'm gonna help people that need food. And I'm thinking in the middle of a crisis, right, her eyes are still to the North Star. The people that showed up to that in the middle of the pandemic, to come together where everybody else was trying to stay far away from each other. This group of people came together and did some really, really great things. If that doesn't speak to somebody's character and their leadership qualities and their ability to inspire people, I don't know what does. It was an amazingly powerful thing that happened and I think really speaks to who Angela is as, a, as, as an individual. Today, Angela continues to feed and educate as many people as she can garnering the same respect from her employees that she does from the community. People always say, she'd give the shirt off the back for you. No, she does give the shirt. It wouldn't, it's not that she would, she does. And I mean, whatever you need, she's there, you know? So it's, it's nice to have a, an owner boss like that. I was living on where Traders Hill currently is. I was living on the property and she started the farm and I kept going over and bugging her every day for a job until she gave me a job. We're very good friends. We're not just employer-employee. We're very good friends. She expects a lot out of us, but 
she she cares and I've been in different places where you work for somebody who doesn't have the care for the business like she does and that makes all the difference in the world to me. Angela also serves as mayor of her adopted hometown, the beachside community of Marineland, Florida. Marineland is the most remarkable place you'll ever live. It is 200 acres of native Florida, never been touched. It is along the ocean and along the river. So you are surrounded by pristine, level, class two waterways that are most amazing. You can live, work, and play there. Whether Angela is at home in Northeast Florida or on the other side of the globe, she will continue her quest to end food insecurity. As I close my eyes for the last time, I would be satisfied to know that millions of people didn't go hungry because of the work, my life's work. I would feel that I met my big, hairy, audacious goal that in the future, we don't have people going to bed starving or hungry. They have nutrition and they are properly nourished so that we can have a better world and a better planet.